is this is this the best moment of your life? You think it's it's getting there. It's getting there. <laughs> Starting to build a little bit. I'm feeling uh, the energy. I like. I'm liking this. I'm, yeah. I'm liking the. I, I forgot the camera was even there, which was nice. The lights just, psh, and I'm like, oof. It's not too much, right? It's perfect. It's okay. Like, it's like, well, yeah, I forgot. It, it, it just creates a really natural environment, I think. Right. It's intimate, too. Yeah. I feel, I already feel like I know you more, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just found out something about you. That's it, right? Your middle name that I didn't know, but now you have two middle names. Two. Which, if you want to give that story. Yeah. Are we going? We're, we've already been going. Oh, right on. Yeah, we've been here for an hour. Oh, no, perfect. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? What do you want me to give you? Give your story your middle name? Yeah, because you said, okay, I never knew that your middle name was, first of all, Graham. And yeah. then you had a second one, Wakoda? W Wakan. Wakan, sorry. My brother's Dakota. Okay. That's his, fir his first name. But yeah, my dad was uh, super into Lakota culture when we were younger mm -hmm. and learned the language, super old school style, like, sent by mail to Colorado University was like, hey, can you send me uh, textbooks? Because they, they teach uh, like the Lakota language at Colorado. Wow. Um, and they sent him two textbooks, uh, of the volume one, volume two. He learned like as much as he could, started to get like uh, super fluent with it. And um, he's super crafty too. So he started like beading uh, necklaces, uh, moccasins. He'd make moccasins and bead them. And so me and my brother have a pair of baby moccasins that are like beaded beautifully he just was it's gorgeous but um yeah he beaded both of them for me and my brother and we would run around in them as little kids it was really fun and but yeah my dad decided uh when i was born he wanted to give me the name lacan because my brother was born first so he's like gotta give him something as well so he uh powerful yeah he gave it to me man and i carry that uh lacan uh deep in my heart this explains a lot. Yeah. This explains a lot. So people who are tuning in live and watching on YouTube or listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, Nathan Harrington is a friend of mine. We were in the yoga teaching program at Yoga Noho. That's yeah. how we got to know each other. And uh, from there, we, we developed a friendship. You decided to leave the United States for a little bit and then come back. Yes. And we stayed in contact. Uh, and now uh, you are teaching currently at yes, Yoga Noho yes. with me. Yeah. We're having a blast there. Good time. And then Sundays we'll be seeing each other doing jujitsu mm -hmm. at um, Little Tokyo Fight Club downtown. We're going to talk about all that. But I mean this as a compliment, okay? <laughs> That's the best way to start a sentence. I'm ready. ready? <laughs> I'm ready for this one. Let's go over the when I, when I, when, when you When you live in L.A., okay? You come across a lot of people who start to seem like you. Does that make sense, what I'm about to say? Word. Okay. Absolutely. The, the long in. hair, the musician. We forgot to mention that, that we're going to talk about that. We're getting in. The yogi. The Hey, be good to each other. You know, God is in everyone. I'm wearing sandals all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, really like. Oh, yeah. Really. Uh, 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 what, what's the word? Hippy. I don't want to say hippy dippy, but like the modern version of what was that okay absolutely but you live it to the core and that's who you are you're genuinely this and that's what i like about you you're not it's not like a facade you genuinely you genuinely care about people's well-being mm. you genuinely want to help people whenever you teach yoga there's a deepness to your art and your craft and it's not bullshit and so i appreciate that so much Dude, that to hold back tears over here, man. Thank you. I seriously mean that. That that's, you know, it's 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 super tough out here. Uh, you know, finding authenticity overall. Mm -hmm. And so I I share the same feelings towards you, my my buddy. Um, I think that you know, I could tell right off the bat from the training, just based off our small banter too, back and forth. I was like, oh, this is a real dude who's just you know really grounded and rooted in what he believes in. So that's send them, send them the love back. This is the purpose of the podcast is just for us to yeah. compliment each other. We're just going to keep building each other up. Hour. Just, you know, yeah. silence the ego, you know, right. lift the heart. <laughs> <laughs> I've been enjoying the uh, the teaching uh, experience at Yoga Noho. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things. How has that been for you? It's been such a, I mean, it sounds, you know, like the obvious, but such a journey. Mm -hmm. um, I think taking a step away from 
being the student and just the student and realizing that the teaching, you know, comes with its own, um, with its own path of learning, you know, uh, each class, I think when I did my first class, I was just like, wow, that was messy. And I remember I was just like, oh gosh, you know, so overwhelmed and needed to like reflect. But then I was like, no, that's part of the journey. That's the yoga. Yeah. And that's what I just kind of started to realize is that you never really, you really never stop learning. And, uh, I spoke with like Jason, uh, one of the teachers over there mm -hmm. at Yoga Noho as well. And, um, I remember we were just started laughing after class one day because we were like, it never ends. You know, like you, no. you keep building on poses and you get strong and then you're like, oh, I'm going to add this, add to that. But like you, you then you look up and you're like, oh, my gosh, this massive void is in front of me. And I'm you'll never we'll just never reach the end, which is beautiful, in my opinion. Yes. Yeah. Two things from that. First of all, Jason, I don't know if you met him, Peyton, when you took a class there. Did you meet Jason at Yoga Noho? Uh, did we have him on the show? No, 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 no. Not no. Okay, no. I'm gonna have him when he comes back from India. Oh God! This dude, dude went to India for he's living so there good. for a year now, just to study yoga and just to go full on with it, like just to increase his knowledge and just to transcend his, uh, you know, practice Abilities, with it. Yeah, for sure. And he's already a very flexible and very accomplished yogi Incredible. on his own. Incredible. He actually says the Sanskrit terms whenever he's teaching. Oh yeah. Which, by the way, still don't know them. <laughs> I've been doing yoga now for what? Years. I don't. I am oh gosh, unashamed to say I don't no, know them. I don't blame you, dude. Honestly, I don't know. Honestly, I think most people too, especially from like new students that are joining the class, and most people aren't really going to know what that is. Uh, they know arms up before you know they hear uh, Asa Tadasana. You know, yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. they're like, oh, okay, I could do that. So from the early beginner standpoint i think it's a uh, you know we can get away with it for yeah. sure <laughs> i just say you know all the uh, the uh the the american names crescent lizard mm -hmm. downward dog shavasana is the only one i go that's like it. okay that's it shavasana everybody yeah everyone's expecting one. that one they're like come on no resting pose buddy call it out <laughs> shavasana thank you <laughs> okay this is something else that sparked in my mind it when you said it's never ending mm. There's something really interesting about that path as an artist whenever that becomes illuminated for you and you are aware of it and then you accept it that your progress is never ending. Mm. Your process is going to be never ending. It's yeah. always changing. It's always evolving because the circumstances are always evolving and at when I'm saying that out loud or thinking about it logically that doesn't it goes what, what wait what Right. There's some, wait, that doesn't make sense. But right. internally, like on a deeper level, it's like, no, that makes sense. Yeah. And wow. there's these That's two conflicting parts in me whenever I hear that. And I, I, I wonder what keeps you going then on that path? Because for a lot of artists, they either stop, they switch directions. What's your motivation to stay on that? You know, it's funny. Um, I started the teacher training kind of on an act of like wanting to serve others on a deeper level. Mm. And I think t to answer that question, it really came down to like what that really looks like. And the only way to truly serve others on like a deep level is to starve the ego and really reach out for humility. Um, and I think yoga is such a humbling practice that it keeps you grounded. Mm. And by not, by having the understanding and the knowledge that you're not going to reach the finish line in this life, like how humbling that really is and how mm. empowering that really is to realize, wow, like, you know, I'm just this little speck in the universe, you know, <laughs> there's, there's uh, not much more to it. And all, all I can really do at the end of the day is put my best foot forward and release the expectations and just surrender. And it just creates that positive practice in my life for sure. And so I, I appreciate it because it is a humbling thing. And, and yeah, yeah, it's kind of pretty mm. much it. It is humbling. It makes me go a little bit into an existential crisis as well, because fair. I'm like, what am I then like in terms of materialism yeah in terms of i know what i'm addicted to in terms of the physical reality mm. i know when my ego rears its head up 
You yeah. Know? No, totally. Um, it makes me somewhat have a mini panic and anxiety attack too, because I'm like, and I'm gonna die at any point. Right. That's like for certain. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's ever. Really ten out of ten die. Yeah. 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 <laughs> ten out of ten. We all die. <laughs> you know. And it could happen literally at any mm-hmm. moment. Chances are, it's later on in life, but that's not guaranteed. Yeah. And then, so it's like, what am I supposed to do with this time? And I've been hearing a lot of um, podcasters who I listen to talk about that recently for some reason. Yeah. One guy was like, I'm 55 almost. If I do things right, I've got another 20, 25 years if I'm lucky. Oh, and then you think about that and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. Oh boy. Counting it up. uh, Counting it up. (laughs) I'm, I'm. (laughs) What, I need to do something. I need right. to. But no, the, I hear you. But the key is like, what what do I need to do that will be fulfilling enough for me mm-hmm. to look back on my life and go, okay, cool. I use my time wisely. Yeah. That's something really interesting. I don't know if that plays around in your head at all. No, it definitely does. Uh, I've been watching a lot of like, I was just got done with this show, Last Kingdom. It's a Viking show. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was really well done in my opinion. And... <laughs> Just touching off that, even to Lakota culture as well, I kind of was, you know, pressed into studying that, you know, growing up because my dad really enjoyed it. And mm. just seeing how these cultures, you know, not not very long ago, um, were like greeting death and where death was on an honorable thing. Mm. And, they were, you know, they were eliminating the fear. And I think like in the Western world, we've really brought death as a as a fear factor it's something to be afraid of you know it's like the unknown and i've 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 definitely struggled with it i mean like about four or five years ago i was really struggling with it and just the idea of what it would be um and it's i think it's a forever practice you know that's a discipline to you know have that understanding that you know that day will come but like you said like filling your life with things that fulfill you and I think you know serving others and and Mm. putting like uh making that your life path and goal really really fills you and I think that that's something that a lot of people always say is it's like you know on their deathbed they're like oh I wish I would have done this wish I would have done that um and I think when you can look back and realize like wow like I really I made a positive impact on those around me and there's nothing more like there's nothing more honorable than that. So it's like, yeah, yeah, something like that, <laughs> something like that. Something along those Some, lines. Something. <laughs> there's also a sense of your identity that's connected with it. Mm. A lot of people are connected with their sense of identity with this body. Yeah. And I feel it's a lot more than that mm. on for two reasons. These are not the only two reasons, but this is the first one on something I personally experienced. I saw one of my dogs eat chocolate Mm. and she was having seizures Mm. and she convulsed and right there and then in front of me, she passed away. Her eyes, it it, it shifted. There was something, one moment there was life in her eyes and the other moment there wasn't. And I was like, oh my, that, spirit or whatever that was that was my dog yeah it's gone and i was looking at the body like it wasn't her anymore mm. on a deeper connection wow that's a great great point i've heard other people talk about seeing their loved ones in caskets and then going oh my grandpa is not in that body it's not anymore there. and they thought they'd be crying more or and some people do cry over their loved ones you know caskets and stuff but they were specific they were like this is not the person i loved and cared for they're somewhere else and there's a part of me that's okay with that that that's like okay there's truth to that right so i'm much more settled in the reality of the situation Mm. yeah and i'm like oh so this identity that we hold to our bodies because our bodies change you know um, maybe there's an attachment to these bodies, to this life, like our relationships, like, oh, this is who I am. This is the deepest it goes. And maybe that's where a lot of the trouble comes from as well with the anxiety of death. Cause then we feel like if totally. we die, totally, I'm just talking this out. Like you're my therapist right no, now, to be honest with you. Bring it on, baby. <laughs> I'm working on that psychology degree, baby. You know, I need the practice. Whoa. Oh, the, oh, that's, 
That was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys that don't know what felt. That was interesting. You know what? This is uh, Oni Mask from Japan. It's, it's supposed beautiful. to uh, uh, scare away evil spirits, so it's not demonic or that's anything That's what like it that. did. It just scared something out of the room, dude. Yeah. That was powerful. Oh, dude. That's the show, man. There you go. Um, very interesting, right? How, how life is so fragile like that. And I don't mean to get macabre here with anybody in here. I hope everybody here lives a long and healthy life because I love everybody. But <laughs> it's over at any moment. Yep. I, even with my brothers, I practice this thing with them because I love them so much. Right. And I feel I'm attached to them. Yeah. Um, I got it from this book, the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying, which is a translation off the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Mm. It, you should uh, acknowledge death every day so that you're used to it more. Basically, that's the simplest uh, yeah. of one of the ch simplest explanation of one of the chapters and I joke with them like dude how sad are we going to be at each other's funerals oh gosh yeah dude we're going to be so sad yeah yeah play techno music or something yeah I, like you know like <laughs> bring the heat bring some hot dogs and hamburgers you yeah. know what I'm saying like that's, um, that's brutal dude it is um <laughs> <laughs> so sad <laughs> I feel the same I don't know way if I though say, dude, yeah, with my anyway. brother man it's so sad but, but that's life. No, it is life. It is. And I think you kind of, you nailed it on a, on a lot of uh, points there. But the, um, the idea, I feel like when we think that it's just, we're just, you know, flesh and blood and that's it. It just, I think that that, from, from what I, from the friends I have and from what I can understand, it's, it really is hard when you don't have like a, a center in your life. Mm. Um, I know that for me, like my faith has really been a journey mm -hmm. and not to get all spiritual but it's definitely been a journey and you know went through some ayahuasca ceremony oh, to, so jealous to really yeah dude it was uh yeah i wouldn't be jealous but um it, oh. it, it was it was uh we'll get into that right now actually why not yeah. real quick but uh, that? i call it the beautifully traumatic experience man um it was horrific and that that once I came down, it was awesome because I was able to really reflect on what had happened. But in the moment, um, there was a little bit of fear, man. I was uh, surrendering into it, and then it came to the point in my journey where I was like this clay, and I was like able to see myself from out of body, and this hand, what I say is like the hand of the universe was like snatching my soul from the body. And I could see like this like mist or whatever it was. And I knew, I was like, that's my soul. And I was like, oh man, like I have to die. And I was like, my parents are gonna be bummed if I don't come back from Vista, California, you know, tomorrow morning. And so I was like, uh, this isn't good. So I opened my eyes, I was in like meditation. And I was like, I'm just gonna wait for this to come down. Um, Cause I had done some uh, other psychedelic journeys and Basically, I was able to always like have control, but this was the one time I, like any substance I've taken where I just felt completely out of control and mm. I just had my eyes open and I had been told like when you don't surrender, you purge and you like spew. So I was like, man, it's going to come. And I was just kind of just trying to wait for it to pass. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to get up and do it. And so I got up to like throw up and, um, soon as I got up, I just coughed. I went, ah, and my, I, just, I ended up face planting and uh, blacked out, uh, but didn't black out. As soon as I hit the ground, I was like flying through the light and everything prior to this trip, I'm not gonna get all into it because it's pretty deep and we're not, you know, we don't have the time for that. But um, everything was very dark and disorienting while I was like closing my eyes initially. And then, so when I face planted, uh, I was flying through the light and I just was like, wow, this is crazy. And then all of a sudden in my earth body, I could hear something's wrong, something's wrong. And that scared me because I was like, oh, wait, what? And then so I started to like kind of wake up a little bit. And then I was like face to face uh, with one of the people that was there. And they're like, something's wrong, something's wrong. But I didn't know that they were tripping as well like crazy i thought like, everyone had come down off their trip and something really had gone weird with my body and i was like oh no and so i was like go get the go get carlos who was the um he was the the shaman for the event 
Go get, just like that his name is Carlos. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Go get it's Carlos. Nothing, nothing special about it. <laughs> right, yeah, right, right. But um, yeah, she went and got him and. While they were leaving to go grab him, I like went out again and then I was back in that light, but like in stillness. And I can really only describe it as like I was at like the presence of creation um, mm. with God or whatever you want to call it. And um, I remember I just started like crying in that form, crying in my earthly form. And Whoa. I just uh, I woke up and it was insane because when I had opened my eyes, uh, when I was resisting, I could feel like my body, like my soul hadn't come back to my body. I felt like, like this, like, ah, aches. And I was like tingling. And like, I just felt not present on earth's plane. And when I came back after I had had that experience with the light, it just had completely passed. The medicine had just completely passed. I mean, I was like, I could just hear the birds, the river. I was like, whoa, it was, it was, so that was amazing. And like the after of it was pretty awesome because it was a good, and, and the whole story is pretty crazy, but um, I felt wow. really blessed to have had that experience because it set me on my yoga teacher training journey. It set me on my a path to wanting to, you know, pursue a degree in psychology. So it, mm. a lot of good happened. So that's the beauty of it. But uh, the guy came up to me, Carlos, uh, while I was like laying down. He's like, what happened? And I was like, I think I blacked out. And he's like, you blacked out. He's like, well, did you see anything? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, then you didn't black out. And then he was like, do you think you died? And I was like, yeah, you really do. And he's like, good. Sometimes you have to die to be reborn. Mm. And I was like, all right. Not doing that again, but that was fun, man. That was a good, uh, it was a mm. crazy experience. Uh, and I'm grateful that I did it because I'd wanted to do it for a long time. And uh, yeah. It's pretty nuts, man. Wow. Yeah, so that brought me really close to my faith, too. When I came back, uh, I uh, started to really root myself, and that has been a strong center for me. So in terms of, like, uh, death and things like that, I've just been really, again, it's it, it. nothing really ever helps, but at least having some kind of center, I find, helps alleviate the fear, mm. you know? Well, kudos to you for doing that. Thanks, man. That's uh, very brave. I've been wanting to try DMT for a while now. You should. And um, I want to, I really, really want to, I feel an urge, like a really deep urge to do it. It's know? calling you. Yeah. That's what happened with the I because they always say it calls you. It's like when you want it, it might not even be ready for you. And that yeah. happened a few times where I had had opportunities to go and try. And then when that all came up, it was such an interesting time. I didn't really want to spend the money, but like, I just mm. felt the calling of the medicine. And I was like, right. oh, Pachamama, she's calling me home. Who? Oh, that's what it's called, ayahuasca, Pachamama. It's oh, a Peruvian. Pachamama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were losing it here for a second. I'm like, I'm the like, ayahuasca's right. coming back, guys. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Man, I feel like I never came back. They're like, Nathan, you never came back. I'm like, what? Oh, it was all a dream. Dude, that's, now here's the thing. I've heard some stories where people go on these DMT trips yeah, and they live a whole life, like kind of like the Rick and Morty episode where they go to the intergalactic arcade and there's a oh, game yeah, dude, they yes. put on and the guy lives 80 years That's right. <laughs> in a separate life. So good. And he's like, oh, I had a wife and yeah. kids, <laughs> you know, but that's brutal. Some people wake some, up from yeah, that. Yeah, dude. Now there's another story, which I love. It's a Mr. Zeke, you would know, uh, Duncan Trussell. Oh, yes talks about this story and I'm just gonna abbreviate this the story uh, generously just to get to the point of it mm. he saw what looked like Jesus Christ in this place and he felt like Jesus turned to him and said whoa 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 you you you're not supposed to be here like this yeah. you're supposed to earn it this is you can't be you can't just jump into this no yeah. no 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 you got to go back yeah and he's like, oh, okay. Wow. And it was very interesting. And <clears throat> I think I've mentioned this to you before. I've had some, what people, I've never tried shrooms or acid. However, the descriptions people give of those uh, drugs and stuff I've seen on YouTube, I've had visualizations like that through yogi breathing. Absolutely. And... A lot of it has come from Kundalini yoga, mm. and my best visuals I've ever seen were done really early in the morning. Mm. And one of my coolest ones was it was like 4:30 or something, and I was just sitting on my rug, 
and I was doing some breathing and then right in front of me is this the only way to describe it is a flower with four petals mm. but it's outlined like it's neon purple like mm. the deepest purple you've ever seen nice and it starts spinning and I remember in this book talking about when you start seeing whatever you know visualization you see don't try to grasp it just observe it mm, and I was like cool I'm just gonna let it be wow and then it starts spinning it starts spinning 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 and it starts going going, going and then it just wow, dude. and I was like okay that was crazy yeah that was crazy to see with my own eyes in this moment right I don't know what that means but okay into it cool not mad at it yeah yeah dude oh, very man. bizarre that's beautiful so that's why I'm interested in taking these um uh, uh, specifically DMT, um, the smoking version of it. Mm. Um, Is that when they blow it in your nose? I think so. Like the shaman guys, like <sighs> maybe. That's or I, when you inhale it. I don't know. I don't know how it's done. I've never done it before, yeah, so yeah, I can't yeah. say yes or no. I've never done that either. Yeah, I'm, I just want to do it from a trusted source because fentanyl's on the rise. Yeah, so dude. I just don't want to fentanyl die. The criminal man. And then have Peyton take over. You know, Peyton's changed. He just booked a commercial recently. Okay. And, um, there we go. Congrats. Yeah, rats. He's been changing throughout the podcast. Just Word. a little backstory, some drama stuff. About <laughs> All right. The show. Um, <laughs> he's been getting a little bit more aggressive with me. We actually had a, a huge celebrity guest, which, by the way, I need to, I need to make an announcement uh, just for legal purposes. Um, uh, last week's episode was what? a parody. What? Yeah, I'm being serious That's right now. The, that wasn't him? That wasn't him. It was a parody. No. Yeah, and you said it wasn't him right afterwards, so I think we're good. What? <laughs> did yeah. I? Yeah, yeah. Thank God you did because <laughs> the show I got it from, like kind of like the idea for it, Yeah. they got served legal papers. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, but they did an hour special in the voice of Tom Brady doing a one-hour comedy special, yeah. and Whoa. they got served papers. I mean, it. but we immediately started talking about AI after. Right. So, right. like, it's a parody. We're, we're I'm just being careful because, you yeah. know, we're not rolling in the dough here Fair. at Wee Sam's World yet. So, <laughs> um, so uh, but, yeah, we had uh, Johnny uh, Johnny D. Oh, there we go. The big Johnny D. You know yeah, him. dude. Yeah, actually, you know what? I, I think do you, well, I'll, I'll play it for you afterwards. Please, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll play it for you afterwards. Um, please. He he called into the show and uh, yeah. Where was this going? What what? Why I've did change the parent? Oh yeah yeah yeah. That's right. I've that's changed. right. Yeah yeah yeah. Something about you changing. Something about me changing. Oh the, oh, you taking over the show if something yeah, happens yeah, to yeah. me with fentanyl. There that's where we're at. We're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> we're live we're back. and we are alive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna steal that. We're live and we're. You alive. got it, dude. Okay. You've been accompanying me, or you accompanied me once so far. And when this comes out, it'll be twice. Yes. To Little Tokyo Fight Club, mm. we do uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu there, and mm -hmm. um, I absolutely love that place. Kudos, shout out to James Choi, owner of the place, and the proprietor of having such a safe and fun and asshole free uh, zone Huge. to practice a martial art Huge. that betters yourself and in a safe way and a fun way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I, I think you know, it was such an interesting thing going in there. Um, when uh, I, I had just, you know, I, I've always had a dream of like having a cafe and then some cool element with it. And I'd never really seen it done that way. And when I had walked, I'd walked past it a few times and I was like, oh, the, it's in the back. And so I went, <laughs> I went in there and I was like, all right, cool, cool. And I just go in there and it's just like, you know, spotless, super clean, so well done. Mm -hmm. And I was blown away. I was like, yeah. this is such a cool vibe. It's like you get your coffee you could chill out and then you go roll a bit why not get in touch with that yeah. your ancestry you know what i mean and i think that was a big you know big reason why i really wanted to get into it um yeah. i had practiced like muay thai for uh, many years and i really enjoy that fighting style um but jujitsu has always been something on my mind and on my heart uh to just pursue and, and give it a shot and yeah i think i was telling you a little while back like just when the pandemic had opened up that first time, mm -hmm. there was a studio that had opened up and it was, uh, won't name you, but yeah, it was definitely being like run kind of illegally given the terms of COVID, just mm -hmm. no mass or anything like that. And not that I really cared about that, but I have like family here in LA. And so I see them quite frequently and I didn't want to be responsible for any of that. But, mm -hmm. um, 
yeah, just showing up there, I, I fell in love with it. Just that first session I had done. And I was like, oh, man. So I was so glad that, you know, you had that connection because it's such a yeah. it's such a great dojo. And um, like you said, the safety is such a big thing. Uh, everyone's really considerate of each other's space. Um, so I'm excited to keep growing it over there. Yeah, it's a good spot. So we do uh, I'm starting to do the um, the warm up. Uh, stretch yeah just 30 minutes before the fundamental class 5 515 545 nice thing to get totally loosened up oh yeah get the blood pumping where you're not like you know out of breath totally and then from six to seven it's fundamentals and from seven onward it's free roll yeah and what's cool is you get to see all levels roll with each other safely and also when I say monsters I don't want to intimidate anybody but they are like am amazingly talented and high level martial artist black belts who have been training for years and years yeah, and just to watch somebody at that level is so inspiring for me for acting especially like wow. well i you're so good at your your craft i want to be yeah, even better man. at mine because you're good at yours yeah, like that's great that point. energy i always i always get so like fired up about it like i want to be that black belt in my acting wow. you know yeah it's a... i don't know if you feel that ever with yoga your music or anything like that that's a pump man yeah i i, I think that's such a such a strong point uh you know I, I feel like i feel that way i like how you affiliate it with not even the same trade which is really really cool um i feel that way a lot when i go out and see shows mm. um when i go see shows I immediately go home and start writing. I'm like, ah, it's so inspirational. Um, Cause yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking that out, outside the box like you, uh, I guess my mind's not that brilliant, but um, no. wait, but, wait, wait, um no. just gonna self-sabotage for a moment. Just bear with me. Um, no, but uh, yeah, no dude, that's such a great point. I think like, you know, being in there and like that, yeah, like uh, I observed the rolling mm -hmm. session um, last Sunday and just seeing it's just incredible because I see I see the story in these people when it's like you know you see they're a blue belt brown belt black belt and they're just you know the work that was put in to be the, to get there because um, it's a super competitive uh, like ranking system you know what I mean they don't just give it away and so it's like those people really put in the hours man and that's super inspirational to me I'm like that's just badass that's the one coolest thing about uh I don't know why sometimes, by the way, this is just like, sometimes I do this. I third person. Dude, um, no, uh, it's all good. He likes me or something. He does. <laughs> um, I sometimes will go into third person and observe myself, what I'm doing, and I've noticed the habit I do it. I sometimes turn to you guys for certain parts. You want approval. <laughs> I don't <laughs> See what I mean? Why'd you say it like that? What do you mean? I, Dude, I know the way you said it just now. I didn't say it any kind of way. Okay. You turn to us when you say something, and you just want us to nod our heads in approval. I, is it just me? Is there a tone behind that, Nathan? You know, this is the first uh, first time. I'll have to go back on yeah. a few episodes, okay. check it out. Nathan, I'll be this is back just the way I talk. All right, fair. I, so he's just taking it personally. All right. That's all. Right. all. <laughs> oh, fired up. Come, come to Sunday class tomorrow if you Any don't got time. any time. <laughs> We still actually need to do that thing with we Edmund. We do. Yeah, we're, we're going to do a group session with uh, the Black Belt, who is teaching Edmund. Nice. Uh, we're going to do a, like a private little We Sam's World session and bring uh, bring the crew in and roll a little bit with each other. And, oh, and, cool. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. I'm going to die. No, you won't. <laughs> oh, oh. Do, do what? Flashbacks. Oh, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. It's going to put me in a chokehold. Dude, oh, I'm yeah. out in three <laughs> seconds. We know. Uh, well, we can't talk about that on air. Yeah. <laughs> You're, okay. nah, all right. Nah, all right. So, have no <laughs> clue why I turned to them, and uh, now I don't even remember where. When we you do about. though, I'll say this: it gives me, uh, it amps me up somehow. I'm like, all right, yeah, right, right. right? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, because I, I dig it. The approval. It's yeah. Like, all right. mm -hmm. Approval. Fair, fair. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. It's the one martial. I don't need the approval anymore. <laughs> it's the one martial art where I've noticed you can't bullshit the rank. Or the color belt you have. Yeah, man. It's so... It's almost actually impossible to be like, yeah, I'm a brown belt at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And, and you're not one. Absolutely. You're gonna, they're going to find out real quick. Oh, yeah. They're like, no, nope, phony. And I think it's because of the number of ranks they have with the belts. Right. So it's white, for those of you who don't know. And then um, blue, 
and then purple, brown, and then black. And there's yeah. a stripes associated. I forget how many stripes with each one. I don't. Yeah, there's there's stripes for sure. But yeah, I don't. Not hundred percent. So, white, you're total beginner. Yep. You can usually tell people who are white belts for sure. What's cool is the jump from white belt to blue belt is huge. huge. It's massive. Huge. You can tell a blue belt whenever they roll with a white belt. Oh, yeah. They look like a black belt yeah. w- against the white belt. And you're like, how many years have you been doing this? And they're like, two. Right. <laughs> it's not a lot at all. No. Sometimes it's like a year if they've been training every single every day. Every single day, yeah. Um, but then the, the, then the jump from blue to purple, you start seeing like, oh, the purple belt is very – yeah. Spe- more specialized, more specific with their technique. The technique's really dialing in. Right. Yeah. It's like the blue is like the reward for putting in the work yes. at the beginning. And then the purple is like, okay, now we're getting technical, like super technical. Right. And it's like, whoa, okay. So yeah, I just totally. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. And then the purple and brown, there's like this this next leap that happens yep. where they're much more comfortable. Mm-hmm. And they're totally okay with whatever you see them. They're okay. They never look like they're really struggling. Yeah. And they're always able to get out of any position. Right. And then that brown to black is another. That's the big jump again. It's like it's like the white to blue, but on the on the back side. Yes. Yeah. There's so, there's something that clicks, and I heard this great saying a long time ago: black belt is when your training actually begins. Wow. Because Epic. you've now. You, you you get it. Yeah. You understand it. And it's that 10,000 uh, days thing or yeah. 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's where I feel like in your craft, if you really uh, dedicate yourself to that, that's when you get your black belt in whatever craft you're doing. Absolutely. And now, then I learned there is a, a big jump between competition and class oh, ranking. Wow. So people who compete yeah, yeah, at yeah. like blue belt are totally different beasts than a person who doesn't compete right. at blue belt. Yeah. It's, I can imagine that. I'm not going to get, I mean, who knows? Anything's possible, you know, but, uh, yeah, dude, I, I think, uh, <laughs> take it one belt at a time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah. But yeah. No, dude, I, that's pretty crazy. And it's just such a, I, I, I like what you said too, about like once you're getting into like the Brown belt area, it's like, you find there's a comfortability almost like everything kind of drops and there's an ease like they might be in a hold but like they know they're getting out yeah and they're just like okay what do i need to do whereas like in those earlier steps too it's just like you could tell there's a little bit of a struggle going on they're like okay how do i how do i but then there's i was watching actually there was a I forget his name yeah he was on he was on the mat with us helping us out i think he was in a purple gi maybe not okay i know who you're you talking, know what I'm about. talking about yes um He's brown belt, I think. Wasn't he or no? Maybe not. I don't know. But yeah. I know that he. Uh, I know I was watching him roll, and I just saw the ease in him. Just very like and like in, in holes that I would have been like, oh gosh, like we're in trouble, you know. They just the just the way he was able to maneuver around was so uh, just like artistic. Just like wow. Blows si- your mind. Size matters very little. Yeah. As you go up in the ranks too, which is. One of the craziest things to think about. Totally. Unless it's a huge jump. But even then, I saw a black belt uh, last Sunday after you left. And smaller than me, but he'd been wrestling since he was a kid and stuff. Yeah. He's done judo. Mm. And just watching him just play around with guys. And he's like, yeah, I took two weeks off. I was just doing a lot of kettlebell training. And then I felt good today. Wow. And you you, just, you don't see him break a sweat with anybody. And yeah, I know, man. And I know – people listening or watching i understand if you've never done it before it might sound like macho talk like a little bit of uh uh alpha male talk or whatever at first glance but there's something deeper that i appreciate with it because these people who dedicate their lives to this craft have to go in every single day and the the simple fact that you're putting yourself into a training session that is a uncomfortable yeah and be against your natural instincts to roll or to spar whatever with someone who's bigger or better than you you're breaking a barrier there that's going to build confidence in your daily life that mm. i think is so important for everybody to have absolutely that can translate to anything yeah speaking of translation into anything we were talking about um 
the 10,000 hours thing. Have you felt like that with your music that you you're in this nice groove with it? Funny enough, man. I was just thinking about that the other day. I, I cause I've been hearing that around, uh, social media a lot, the 10,000 hour. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I heard something recently. I don't know if it equates, but about the 18 minutes a day, if you put in 18 minutes a day, you'll be 95% better than anybody else in the world at your craft. And I was like, that makes sense. Um, and he equated it to uh, a, a coworker that he was working with. Um, he asked him how his weekend was going. He's like, oh, good. I took my kid to my soccer game. He's like, oh, how'd it go? He's like, oh, he scored nine goals. M number might be wrong, but it was a high number. It was mm. a ridiculous number. Um, and he's like, oh my gosh, how many, why did that? He's like, oh, every day, you know, I spend 18 minutes with him extra. And wow, that, you know, I mean, I, I look back to when I played soccer and um, how, when you can put in that extra little bit of time uh, a week when everyone else is, you know, not, and they just are, well, oh, just go to practice two, three times a week. And you, and you have someone that's out working you. I mean, it makes sense. It just makes sense on paper. I mean, you're putting in the training. And so in terms of my music, I feel like I always say, I don't really believe in mastery of like that craft. I mm -hmm. believe like at some point you, you reach a point where, you know, you're doing, you're doing very well at, you know, what you're doing, constructing and it, but because it's an art and it's creative, it's hard for me to really say like you can master it because some days in terms of songwriting, you know, it pours out of you. And some days it's like, wow, I'm stuck for three, four months with a, with a block. So it's like, it's really because it's like emotional and it's creative. I find that uh, you're really, it's, a, it's actually a humbling practice. And so it's, you, you really end up in a position where you're just surrendering to the musical gods, honestly. And mm -hmm. you're just like, when it comes, it comes. And this past uh, couple months has been super successful. And I remembered just before that I was just on a block for like months. And I was like, man, like nothing. I just wasn't happy with what I was putting out. And and then it just snaps and then you're like, oh, so this is what's supposed to happen. It's like, you know, it comes in waves and, you know, you think, you know, and then guaranteed, man, I'll be caught in that same trap in a few months where I'm like, oh, why can't I do it? It just it's just I think it's just my I don't know if it's just my creative process, but um, that's definitely how I operate. But I think my proficiency in like my guitar abilities and and my songwriting has definitely just grown. Um, and I, and you see it every, every song I feel is just, you know, it gets better and better. And that's a great feeling too. Uh, it's just, it's just, I think it comes down to being patient and awaiting when, um, you know, the muses work through you. It's just like, you just have to be patient and, uh, and ready, ready mm. to, ready to pull the trigger. Well then how do you get into that ready state? You, that flow state, some people call it. I think it really comes down to, oh, well, that's actually a great point. I think it really comes down to, I was talking to myself, my head said, I saw this, that. this. Yeah. And so I was like, all right. We all saw it. I was like, that's a great <laughs> idea. Um, but yeah, no, I think that, you know, filling your life cup is super important and doing things that you love and getting out in nature for me is really helpful and creating experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that that is super helpful. And then I kind of just forget about writing, forget about music mm. and just put that like in the back burner while I'm enjoying these experiences. And then I come back with like a fresh palette and, and ready to ready to work. Cool. I find that's been the best uh, tool for me. Yeah. Dude. That's why we're friends, man. Are we, Grateful. I'm, I'm, Grateful. I'm, I'll be honest with you. I'm really excited to roll with you tomorrow if you decide to stay after and roll a little bit. Let's, no, tomorrow I definitely want to. Yeah. Um, because I felt your grips. This guy's got grips. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. I mean, I felt bad because I was like, um, oh, I'm sweating all over you. I was like, oh no, gross. I don't care. But no. uh, uh, you started dripping on me. And I, I was know. Like, I saw you. I saw you do the wipe, and I was like, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm like, <laughs> and then and then I was like. I'm sorry. I couldn't even help it. I was like, I'm sorry, man. And you're like, it's all good, dude. No. You, there's a, there's a. It's part uh, of the game. You know Jocko Willink? No. Okay. He's like this uh, ex Navy SEAL who's written a lot of like uh, these wonderful books on leadership and um, self improvement, cool. etc. Um, and he, there's this one episode of his podcast. He talks about how he's rolling with one of his buddies, and <laughs> his buddy was being so mean that he was purposely dripping sweat into his eye. <laughs> 
Brutal. And he was like, when I get out of this, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> so it's Win it's by really any fine. means necessary, yeah. man. Yeah. That's he's it. Like, he's like, you know, like squinting his eyes so that his sweat drips right into his eyeball. <laughs> Brutal. I know. Woo. That's my that's my new move. That's right, a good Zeke, one. Zeke, you don't like that. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to do that to you. I don't like that. I'm going to do that to you. I'm going to get really sweaty. <laughs> No, thank you. Yeah, no, you're, it's going to happen. <laughs> no. You Man. ready to watch some videos? Let's watch. Okay, I haven't seen these videos. Did we uh, approve the videos this week? Uh, nah. Oh, great. So, <laughs> they'll perfect. be fine. Somet- it's all good. Sometimes uh, they're hit and miss, but I um, like it. Uh, our wonderful intern Zeke has compiled videos for us to watch each week, and sometimes it's in the theme of the guest. Some videos, maybe? Yeah, these are all themed for, for specifically for you. So. Oh, great. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Zeke. You've, Let's been, watch. you've been watching me. <laughs> no. no. I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> he goes, no. No. <laughs> Not at all. Oh. 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 Good. Break- uh, breaking his body. <laughs> That's basically what I can do. What? Breaking is- his body. Can you imagine him going to your class? Oh. <laughs> and Karen's in there. She's like, no. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Fired. But I tried. I uh, dude, uh, what do you think? Like with, pe- I mean, obviously it's a. Yeah. Oh, yeah. is that what it is? I mean, it's got to be. I don't know. I know. I have a friend that uh, she's a incredible contortionist, but that's just not sustainable. Yeah, the body you, can't do that. How much do you very get long. into that? And like, that's like that's like he's moving stuff around <laughs> with a still face, just <laughs> stoic. He's like, and you can take hear the, the pic- oh shoots. It's like take the pictures. Yeah, that's brutal. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm not getting into that yoga for yeah. sure. All right, what about this one? Can we uh, move the box too whenever you're using the yoga? What? They're flipping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. What mudra is that? <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know what? It must be. It, it must, must be, a be like a mudra. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, mudra is a uh, hand. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. A hand position. Yes. A gesture to um, uh, dictate a certain uh, energy or emotion. Yeah. Okay. It's a great way that. to put it. I was not gonna land the, land the plane what like that. What are the so most well done. common types of mudras? The muladhara oh, mudra. Oh, that's like the that's the meditate. Yeah. 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 And if you. This is also, simple. white power. You can't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, People, the internet has called that white power symbol. I, you can't do it. Yeah, we're not. You can't. Yeah, Don't I, say white power, we Sam. <laughs> Dude, I I can't stand him. Sometimes I'll be completely. Frank I'm with serious. You. you can't make that symbol because last week his he had a question which I'm not going to repeat that we were like I was contemplating by the way texting Peyton go hey should we keep that part out because it was <laughs> I just don't even wait, what part yeah what oh part? when he was like uh, out of nowhere by the way out of nowhere oh, oh, he goes yeah, yeah, hey yeah. would you guys no. want to take over Hitler's body no, and no, no, then no, like no. stop World hey, War Two and hey, we're like what hey that we were playing would you rather so I was but there was up, no would you rather after yeah there that. was. Yes, there was. We were playing Would You Rather. We're not. Oh we're, so it's not like I just you. bring up Hitler. You did. No, <laughs> no, you did. did. No. Oh, my we God. We were playing Would You Rather. Bro, in order to play Would You Rather, you need another thing. You yeah, just... I did. I had another thing. It was be homeless for 80 years. Remember? <laughs> you don't remember that? Be Hitler for the last four Whoa. years of his life or be homeless. That's it. That was the Would You Rather. Anyway, we were playing Would You Rather, and I didn't bring it up out of nowhere. So. Fair. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> anyway, I got, f- um, I, I actually had a, a friend sneak a camera into Wee Sam's yoga class that he's been teaching, and I got footage, a secret footage of oh his no. yoga oh, class. Nice, nice. Oh, no. For this video. Here yes, we go. Yes, yes. Yeah. What is... They're in front of a sales office. You know what this is? What? This is... I know what this is. <laughs> what is it? It's called Zeke Yoga. No, I'm no. kidding. It's called... Um, it's similar to Laughing Yoga. Yeah, Have you ever like, tried this? Oh, I've heard yeah, of it. Yeah. Yes. That, that's something I wanted to do with Isaiah for the longest time. <laughs> what is it? He'd be Laugh good at yoga? That. And it's... By the way... I personally don't rec- think it works. Okay. But it's just so out there that I'm like, okay, whatever. Mm. But it, this is the way they do it. They go, 
and I'm not exaggerating. Oh God. They'll say, "Hi, my name is Wee Sam." <laughs> I have cancer. Oh, oh my. They're okay. trying to say the negative things that bother them and oh, then okay. laugh okay. it yeah. out. Okay. Wow. But each person is saying hor- so horrible really things and you're just like this is Oh, man. This is the we- by the way you're a psych, uh, psych major now. Yes. I'm curious if you come across that in any of your books to to help. Never any of that. I've heard of like like the laugh therapy. Yeah. Um, that's a little different. And I and I know that it, re- the, it the, what they're trying to get at is that it releases like positive endorphins in the body when you're doing that. Mm-hmm. So it's like a dopamine rush. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I'm a big cold shower cold plunge guy and so it's like that is way better in my opinion and it's a little more uncomfortable but i think we all need a little uncomfortability in our comfortable lives yeah yeah. so yeah. i i that might yeah, also, i'm just not not, yeah. not not really not really a big enthusiast of no. that that similar to kundalini some of the like yeah like that stuff, but totally. they're doing it standing. And what do you think weird. the benefit of what they were doing was, though? Because like the laughing therapy, like yeah. I can get like yeah. what they're trying. What do you think? Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. Is trying to channel get they're negative like, get the stuff out. out. That's okay. what it seems like because yeah. they're going like. <sighs> yeah, yeah. The I know that they do the. I forget what it is with the tongue out. There is one that's like the <sighs> oh lion's breath. Yeah, oh, might be yeah. A, might be a, a certain version of that. But well, that's um, to cool you down. It is to cool you down. So that's why, because they're going like that like with their fingers. Yeah, up. they're like, it's like crouching tiger or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I don't know. That's pretty crazy. Real quick, uh, we are out of time here on Adobe Radio. Thank you so much for tuning in. The show continues on. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on YouTube all tomorrow morning. So tune in. Thank you if you listen live. Hit us up on Instagram or Twitter and uh, follow us everywhere. We love you. show continues on. All right, let's keep it. Let's keep right, it going. This Zeke. is the last one. Okay. <laughs> oh, I saw this one before. That was straight up real. You saw everyone, all those girls, like, oh yeah, flinched back a little that bit. That was real. And that also, was... if you watch the teacher, you can tell like maybe he thought he broke a bone. Yeah, but he's then a realized panicked. it's a fart. Wait, wait, wait. panic that beat. He's like, oh god, what did I do? Like, look, <laughs> you think that's real? Yeah, the fart. Everything about it, definitely. The way everybody reacts immediately makes me think it was pretty, like, you know. I would have I to respectfully. I, I would have to respectfully disagree. I think that's staged. And it sounded real. You know, it and is the laughter is real. Nowadays. The laughter is real. I mean, look, but watch the teacher. <laughs> well, he he flinches back a little bit because he's like, oh, did I push too hard? Did I like? Pop something. My thing is, it, it's too fr- like. Why are they filming it? And they're in the back too. Like it just seems very uh, staged. Well, they're taking a selfie. I you don't know. Yeah. That does seem staged. I didn't even realize that part. This like the <laughs> selfie thing. Yeah. That's the only part I will say. Gosh, okay. why, why? Why do people fake that? I know sad. views. It's like what's, what's the point? I know pain. views. Yeah. What? What? Because what? Do you need approval? Why are you looking over here? Peyton, what? <laughs> um, would you guys ever do goat yoga? Sorry, I just oh, wanted yes. on the last video. You guys reminded me, but I didn't want to. I talked it. about that once on an interview. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be into it. Um, I I really like that. Like, uh, I've been teaching at a rehab center. Um, mm. recently I started that. Uh, it's been really awesome. Such a different uh vibe from <laughs> obviously teaching at studio. Uh, but one of the pay uh, clients had had a dog, and dog would be around while we while I was doing classes I'd be in down doll all of a sudden this dog just comes and starts licking my face and I'm like oh that's mm. and I actually really think puppy yoga is really good energy in the room mm. but I will say I, I find it a little distracting yeah so that was the only one thing I think the goats kind of you know with them I think they'd be a little more cool and just kind of chill with the puppies need attention they're like oh mm. gosh but uh, I'll be down for some goat yoga. That'd be sick. That'd be cool. Yeah. We can ask Karen if we can bring in some goats. <laughs> I'm sure she would love that. Yeah, she'd be excited. She'd be real. She'd be really excited. Karen. Yeah. What do you say? It's up there. It's up there. <laughs> We're throwing it out. Was that it? Was that the last one? Yeah. Okay.
Today was this week was good. It was it was short it was and sweet. Good batch of videos. Yeah. Thank you. Was anything taken out? No. No. no okay. I, I didn't just, see any of them. No. Okay. Good. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Good job, man. Thank you. You got an A this week on your report card. <laughs> Hell Thank yeah. You. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Whew. All right. You all right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's getting emotional. You're very yeah. red from where I see you. That's no. why. Okay. I'm just... <laughs> You're just what? I don't know. Vibing out. Yeah, I'm vibing. Well, we all love you, man. Yeah. I'm going to give you some words of affirmation. We yeah. all love you here. We all love you, too. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Some words of affirmation for you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nathan, how you doing? You know, uh, <laughs> I'm doing so good. I feel really, uh, feel alive, uh, and I'm uh, alive. Uh, Great. Just doing the best I can over here, and uh, I'm so grateful to be around all y'all and good oh, energy. Thanks, and so, thanks appreciate that. Thanks so much. Yeah, man. Welcome back anytime. Um, if people want to check out your music, where where or your yoga teaching schedule, where can they check you out? Basically, just hanging out on uh, Instagram. So uh, it's going to be at Nathan Harrington with an S on the end because someone took uh, my username. But Nathan Harrington's uh, on uh, Instagram. So that's interesting. Yeah, man. I was Nathan Harrington music for a little bit, but then I was like, I'm more than my music. Mm -hmm. And then I went and then I reached. This is a quick one. Reached out to the guy that had my username. I was yeah. like, hey, man, it'd be so awesome if you could just uh, surrender that over. He hasn't posted since 2014. Nothing. Got on his Facebook. Cause I, I found his, uh, I didn't, I couldn't even find his Facebook. I found his, well, I found his wife on Facebook. And then I went through the friends <laughs> list, found him. If you're out there, Nathan, man, like, Please respond, but no response. Not even looked at my message. Didn't even look at my message, and I was like, "All right, well, I give up. I did all I could do." So, um, you found his wife. <laughs> I found his wife. So I didn't message his wife, but I considered it, and um, uh, I, uh, That's even you know, <laughs> I thought that I thought that maybe that'd be crossing a line. Oh, but you didn't. I didn't do it. No, oh, no, no, okay, no. Yeah, okay, good. The You're wife good. never got messaged. I, I went on to her Facebook to find him. Right, right, and then right. And I was like, all right, I would give him a shoot. And it was funny because my uh, team at the time was like, just, just, it can't hurt. And I was like, oh, this is so weird. But message to the wife. But yeah, I checked it out. I think it's not a bad idea. She posts a lot. Um, I, I, I became Facebook friends. With, I was just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, but uh, yeah, uh, I should, I should see how she's doing. He, he took, he, he, uh, oh man, that's good. <laughs> I like that. I oh, like yeah. that a lot, man. That was worth it. That, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was worth it. I got to end on that. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, brother. Cool. Thank you so much. Hey, Peyton, play us out. What's up, everybody? Uh, thank you for tuning in uh, to We Sam's World. You can follow us at We Sam's World on all social media platforms. Hit that subscribe button, uh, hit the bell icon, and hit the like button. Leave a comment below if you do yoga or if you've taken one of our classes and you enjoyed it. And uh, let's uh, let's see what you guys give Zeke for his performance this week. I think he deserves an A, but let us know what you think he deserves. A, B, C, D, F, and uh, Y. You know, I think that'd be good. Any improvements you can see in Zeke that should be applied to the show, that'd be great. I like that, actually. Let us know what you, th how you think Zeke can improve at what he does. I uh, think that's good. I think that's really good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Peyton, what do you think? Sure, man. I what? don't like your tone. What are you talking about? Always remember, listen, <laughs> think, and then talk. Bye. <laughs>